Dear friends, it gives me immense pleasure today to welcome none other than Shri Arvind Gupta ji with us, uh, who needs no introduction. And beforehand, I also I would like to thank everyone out there in the country uh, who has joined hands to listen us to listen what is going around Toyakathan, the initiative that is creating the rounds across the country. Uh, Shri Arvind Gupta ji, he did his B.Tech from IIT Kanpur and for 40 years he has tried to make science really interesting for children using low cost experiments and toys from trash. He shared his passion for books and toys through his popular website arvindguptatoys.com and he has received numerous awards and needless to mention the Padma Shri itself. We are really on that uh, the session, the beginning, the Shubharam is going to uh, happen under the edges of our, uh, under the, uh, you, I must say the Ashirwad of Sri Arvind Gupta ji, the toy man, the, the person who is leading the efforts and ultimately we are doing this toy kathansa across the country so as to invite the ideas, the solutions, the independent innovations from across the sector so that it not only spread awareness among school students, college students, and also among the startups and the professionals, so that a culture of uh, indigenous toys uh, are never bad, so that's to ensure SME sector can boost up by some cross licensing. So these are the objectives of Taikathan, sir. And uh, now we would like to hear you. I'll not take much of your time, sir. Thank you so much once again to uh, come here for us, sir. Uh, um, thank you, Mohitji, uh, for this very generous introduction. And uh, thank you, AICTC, for, for organizing a seminar like that. I would begin uh, with my own life journey. Uh, I presume that most of, the, uh, most of the, my listeners' audience today are entering college teachers and students. Uh, I did my BTEC. I joined IIT Kanpur in 1970, which is precisely 50 years back. Now, 1970 was a very, very radical time. There was a political ferment across the world. There were students uh, uh, participating in mass demonstrations in France, challenging authority. There was the anti-Vietnam movement. There was a civil rights movement. In India, we had the Naxal movement and the Jay Prakash Rai movement. Now, whenever there is a political churning of society like this, it unleashes a lot of social energy. A lot of, a lot of people start thinking, reflecting very deeply. Many said, many had, uh, the Second World War was not very far away uh, in 1945-47. So they said, no, they had seen the carnage. They had seen the massacre in the World Wars. And many scientists said, we are not going to participate in making weapons and bombs and missiles. If we can't give life, we have no right to take lives. So people, very sensitive people, clever people were looking for alternate careers. Now, one of the persons was Dr. Anil Sadgopal. He did a PhD from Caltech and returned to India. And he started the very famous, he was at the TIFR, uh, cutting edge institute in the country, worked with Ubaid Siddiqui, a fellow of the Royal Society. He was doing some assorted research, not able to relate it to the lives of the ordinary people. And he started something called as a Kushingabad science teaching program. Perhaps the best effort in our country post-independence for teaching science to village children using activities. I used to work with Tata Motors in 1975. I joined as a graduate engineer training. Tata Motors training is a dream training for an engineer. Two years, you wear green overalls and you work on the shop floor. After that, it started becoming boring and I spent a year in the Hushnabad Science, 1978. And as this program was village children, there was a village bazaar, just go hard kehenge, where people spread all their wares on the on the on the roadside, uh, and they sell them small trinkets, small plastic boxes, mirror, bangles. So I said that Kanpur and Pune are very far away. The challenge lies in trying to design something which is which I can buy off this heart, of this street bazaar. When I was getting my bicycle inflated, I saw this thing. This is cycle valve tube, where you actually pump in air in a bicycle, use a bit of this. Now, this is available in even our very remote villages. 
you get a packet of this for 40 rupees, which is a 100 gram packet, which is for 50 feet of the cycle value tube. Now you take a small piece of the cycle valve tube and you put two matchsticks. They go inside head on and you make a flexible joint of two like this. Now this is like acute angle, a right angle, obtuse angle, straight angle, reflex from zero to 360 degrees, you could depict any angle. It's like a, you can see a flexible coupling. You don't need to uh, join the motor in the machine with a straight shaft, it could be an inclined shaft. If you have three of these together, loop them together, you make a very nice triangle. Because matchsticks are mass produced in a factory, so all it's a very special kind of a triangle, it's a collateral triangle. These are all 60 degrees. If you take four of them, you make a square, you make a pentagon, you make a hexagon, you make all these kinds of geometric shapes. And there's some very interesting properties. If you like to take the hexagon, for instance, just pull this out, this becomes a, a, a rectangle, this becomes a parallelogram. But this is like an amoeba, which is constantly changing its art profile. It's unstable, it's unrigid, it's very, very flexible. If you just inspect the pentagon, for instance, just pull this out, this becomes a boat shape. This becomes a house shape, this becomes an isosceles triangle. Again, very, very shaky. The square would distort. If you make a bridge with square members, what would happen? If the train would come, the bridge would start doing a dance. It would start doing a jig. It would be very, very weak. It would collapse. But then you would give a girl a triangle. And no matter what, what she does, a triangle remains a triangle. This is the bedrock of all civil and mechanical engineering. The triangle is the only rigid polygon. And if you wish to make any structure strong and rigid, you've got to divide this into triangles. Now, this gave me, this is the first month. I was a very young 24 year engineer. And this I did in my first month in the Hushangabad science. And this gave me immense pleasure. I thought someday oh, this would be used by many, many people. You could take, you could just poke a hole in this rubber and put a third matchstick. You get a T-joint. If you take the triangle, if you take the triangle and this, and you fix them together, then you make a tetrahedron. Now tetrahedron means made of four, four triangles. And this is the strongest structure in nature. All bonding is essentially tetrahedral. Even if you have a cubic bonding, these are two interlocked tetrahedra. Just look at this. This is a model of methane, CH4. Four atoms of the hydrogen and the four atoms of tetrahedron in between is a little carbon atom. So school going children could make very simple molecular structures. You could make a, you could make a cube. Uh, you could also make a joint of four and a joint of six. Now with these, all you just need is a needle or a thorn for making that. And with these, you could make all kinds of 3D structures. You could make the cube, for instance, and put a pyramid on top and could make a village house. This is like a village house. You could take the, you could take a prism and put the pyramid, uh, put a tetrahedron on top. This would look like a temple, right? And this is the icosahedron. Ico means 30 made of 30 triangles. Just making joints of six and using only five. This is the icosahedron. Now, this made me very, very happy. I was 24 years old, and I thought this is so much better than making trucks. This was my calling in life. And I've never repented. It's been 40 years, I've been meandering like that. Uh, I've been to 3,000 schools, and everywhere I've shown this to children, because this is low cost. If there was one technology which has reached most of our villages, it's a bicycle. You can get the cycle valve to it. So I started with this. But they just went on. I'll give you another example, which is the, the electric motor. Now, even in engineering colleges, as you're all the teachers in the engineering colleges and students, rare is engineering college where a child ever makes an electric motor. Look at a middle class home. The fan is a motor, the cooler is a motor, the, the AC is a motor, the washing machine, the fridge, the mixie. It's the motor which drives a pump, which fills water in the overhead tank. At a dozen places, we use the motor in the house, but no child ever makes a motor, either in school or in the entering colleges. This shows us the mutilation of education and we need to transform it. Now look at this motor. This is a, this is a torch battery. It took 1.5 volts, cost 20 rupees. This is the old bicycle tube. 
and these are two safety pins which are snug to the plus in the mind is the battery now you can see this is a magnet it need not be a ring magnet it could be a square magnet it could be a rectangular magnet for right very cheap these are 50 paisa each and this is a coil which you make with a one meter of insulated copper wire which you use for motor rewinding there is copper inside but it's insulated with a layer of varnish not a plastic sleeve so you make this coil and if you just put this in In less than 10 minutes, you make a great motor. A motor which you can make it work. This is one of those great models, no matter how many mistakes you make, you can always retrieve it. You can always rectify it. And imagine the gleam in the eyes of a child. If a child is able to get the motor work, all the Faraday's laws of induction, which we read in a very boring manner, without any comprehension, without any understanding, which stands starkly clear in their minds. This will hook them to theory. Both theory and practice are required, not one. If you just do practice, you remain a mystery on the roadside. And if you just do theory, you remain a professor without dirtying their hands. And you, you, you also rot. But if you put practice and theory together, you go to a higher level. Imagine the smile on a child's face, the gleam in the, they will be hooked to science for life. They would say, we want to do nothing but science. This is not a rich man's game. If you have a battery, it takes five rupees to make the motor. No kids, throw them out. No kids at all. Do this with your children. In 2020 years, back i did electrical engineering from it kanpur it kanpur gave me the distinguished alumnus award and then the electrical department wanted to honor me with folded hands i said sir i spent five years in it kanpur but i discovered the beauty of the motor much later it's never too late to discover don't give up this is the good way of learning science i will show you another very nice model and this is this is a syringe from an injection. It's a 10 ml syringe. We have nothing to do with the needle, right? We just need the outside plastic barrel. What I hold in my hand, these shining uh, like stainless steel, these are neodymium man magnets. These are rare earth magnets, so powerful. There are two of them and I can't even separate them. They're so powerful, sticking to each other so solidly. But they go inside the barrel and you can see that they can slide. They were very powerful magnets, so they've got a powerful magnetic field around them. And I put a stopper. This is the magnetic circuit. Now I take thin insulated copper wire, 36 gauge, and a thousand turns around. It will take half an hour from start to end to make a model like that. The start and the end is scrape, and we have just attached an LED to it. Light emitting diode. That's it. Now, if I shake this, the syringe magnet is going to go left and right. It's like a moving magnetic field inside it, and which cuts the lines, the, the, this coil cuts the lines of forces. There is an EMF generator. Look at this. The, we are producing electricity. Yes. Even the biggest generator in the world, a thousand megawatt generator, uses the same principle. Principles don't change. This is a miniature model within the child's fold, within the child's reach, which a child can make herself. Imagine the extent of empowerment. I come from a small town in UP where there are eight hours power cut. If a village girl in UP or Bihar, one of the backward areas of a country, makes a generator like this, she's able to light a LED. She will say, today I light a LED, tomorrow I light up my village. This is the extent of empowerment which good education can give. Not just, not just rote education, where you mug out and spit out. Many of our universities and colleges uh, have become dispensers of degrees. That's it. These are mass factories churning out degrees, not thinking people, not enabled people at all. But this is a very, very nice. In my city of Pune, 10,000 children have made the syringe generator. Imagine a very good future for a country with models like that. 
I'm going to show you some very simple uh, toys. Now this is made with a plastic straw. Just take a plastic straw and I just flatten one end. So it flattens and becomes slightly soft. Then with the scissors, I'm going to cut two slots. Now this becomes like a point. It's like a point, it's like a pencil point, spear point. If you see from the side, it looks, it looks like a baby crocodile's mouth, which opens and closes. This is a reed, R-E-E-D, reed. A reed which vibrates. I'm going to put this reed in my mouth and blow my lungs out. <coughs> Very amazing sound. You're not able to see how the sound is produced because the reed was hidden in my mouth. I'm going to keep this outside. Instead of blowing out air, I'm going to suck in air now. Look at this. <coughs> This end is opening and closing at a very fast rate. It's vibrating. Vibrations produce sound. But children don't need to muck it up. A straw, they can enjoy the sound. They can see it. And then the concept will go much deeper. This is not a rich man's game. We don't need artificial intelligence laboratory for this. Right? Now if I just make two holes over here. Two holes over here. We are inching towards a flute. One more experiment with this, the first one which we made, that this is the reed, I'm going to keep blowing at it, keep making the sound, and with the scissors, I'm going to keep cutting it, making the straw shorter and shorter, and something very nice happens. You will forget everything about this lecture, but you are going to forget this experiment. Look at this. <coughs> All the seven notes to a straw. You can enjoy them thoroughly. We saw that the longer the straw, the lower the pitch. The shorter the straw, the higher goes the pitch. And the shorter straw, <laughs> very high pitch. And with this, children taught us, often children are the only original researchers. They look at things in a very original manner. And this is what the children taught us. We make very, very funny sounds. These are primordial sounds which we all made as little children cry. So we can do that. Another, another one with a straw. Now look at this. This is a slightly fat straw. And what I've done is I've just made four V cuts. V cuts, deep V cuts. You can see them. Right. And then there's a thread hanging over here. I wove the thread through the straw. There is a knot over here. Right? The knot and just put a tape. A golden tape so that the thread stays at this point. Now, if I just pull this, I pull this thread, what happens to this? It's like a robotic finger, right? And plastic has a tendency to go back to its original position, so that's the restoring couple. Very, very nice. Two minute toys. Children don't want very elaborate things. Today, you get so many of these Chinese gadgets full of light and cacophony, full of sound, they blare and they light. I think those are not very good for our children, right? The best toys in the world is, even they may not be very glittery, are what the children make with their own hands. We have a slogan that the best thing a child can do with a toy is to break it. Why do children break toys? Because they're curious cats. They want to see what is inside it. I'm going to show you one example of that right away. You see, this is, we make 31 different pumps. Go to my website. No one in the world makes 31 pumps. You can throw water to 20 feet away. You can make a sprinkler. You can blow up a balloon. You can do all kinds of interesting things. Here is a balloon. Here is a balloon pump. I'm going to put the balloon and then fill it up. It's a real pump. It's not a phony pump. If I keep doing like this, I'll pop the balloon. The balloon will go burst. And as I said, we have a slogan that the best thing a child can do with a toy is to break it. Why do children break toys? Because they're curious cats. They want to know what is inside the tummy. Is the pet kender kya hai? To achha khilona wo hota hai jiske jisko bache khol ke dekh sakhe. This toy invites them. Pull me apart. Dekho kya hai? 
साइकिल का पुराना ट्यूब है आठ इंच का ये फिल्म डील की डिब्बी है फिल्म डील की डिब्बी है जिसमें एक छेद करा है और एक तरफ यू कैन सी देर इज अ एक प्लास्टिक का टेप का वैल्व है इधर से दिस इज ग्रीन लाइट एंड व्हेन आई सच इट्स रेड लाइट वन वे व्हाट इज द वैल्व इट्स अ वन वे ट्रैफिक इट्स लाइक अ ट्रांजिस्टर राइट नाउ दिस इज द अदर देयर इज अ होल ओवर हियर एंड वंस अगेन यू कैन सी दैट देयर इज अनदर वैल्व ओवर हियर व्हिच इज ओपनिंग एंड क्लोजिंग यू सी दिस ओपनिंग एंड क्लोज दिस इज माय सक्शन वैल्व दिस इज माय डिलीवरी वैल्व दिस इज माय सक्शन वैल्व and this is my bellows and if i put together then i make a very very beautiful pump children can pull this apart and all their curiosity about how this pump would be satiated that's a great toy which children can pull apart and put back again right then that halo that mystery is gone they know how it works in real life right so this is the pump this is another very nice toy this is Toy which I like to show you. Now this is a fat straw. You see, I have a fat straw. And when what I did was I just flattened both the ends. It's about four inches long, and sealed them with blue tape. And then with the scissors, I just cut the top right right corner and the bottom left corner. So both these corners are diametrically opposite, and both have little little holes. Then I just folded this in half and. Both these corners, and I get a diamond over here. This is a diamond hole. This is my spinning straw, and this green thing is a is the blowing straw. You can see there is a small hole over here. Can you see this hole over here? That's the hole. Why this hole? If I shut this end, and if I blow from here, air will come out at right angles from this hole. So that's the assembly now. Okay. Three minutes, and you make an amazing toy. This demonstrates Newton's third law of motion. If reaction is equal to opposite reaction, when air exits this hole, it gives it a push in the opposite direction. Exits from here, so that's how it gets a torque like this. Now, many of the other toys which I am going to show you, they come from a book called as the. joy of making indian toys this is by a very iconic person his name is sudarshan khanna and he worked in the national institute of design for 40 years inspiring his students who came from all over india that you get your tradition go to a village mela get your toys from kerala uh, go in the northeast get your toys from your village and in 40 years he collected the, the richest collection of india's folk toys It's a salute to the genius of this country that without these mass-manufactured toys, they had a happy childhood, playing with materials, playing with toys made with materials which were locally available. Right? I'm going to give you a glimpse of many of these toys. Now, this comes from the same book. It's a magic fan. Look at this. What this fan does? There's a little stick over here. There is a, a real kind of thing over here. I'm going to push the stick up, and what happens? Oh, a fan appears and put it down. Ten-minute toy, no great things. It has all the excitements of a world-class toy. Another very nice toy is uh, Sudarshan's book. It's called as a Sudarshan Chakra, right? This toy perhaps came from Kerala. Now, what is that? This is the This is a coconut broomstick. Marathi made karata matta. Jhalu ki seek, nariyal ki jhalu ki. One long and one short. And you tie this with a string so that the small stick is slightly bent down, just like the railway semaphore arm. That's it. This probably came from Kerala, and there are lots of baby coconuts which fall from the tree, and kids would put a baby coconut. Now where I live, there are no coconut trees, so I took a piece from a rubber slipper. You can take an eraser, some weight over here. That's it. And I perch it on my index finger, and if I spin it, it's like that. The centrifugal force, centripetal force. 
आर बिग वर्ड्स फॉर लिटिल चिल्ड्रन एक कान से सुनते हैं दूसरे कान से कचरा पेटी में जाते जो पढ़ाते भी हैं लोग उनको भी इसका इल्म नहीं होता इट्स ओनली आई प्लेइंग विद स्मॉल टॉयज लाइक दिस दैट यू गेट सम इंक्लिंग्स अबाउट व्हाट दैट फोर्स इज ऑल अबाउट राइट वेरी नाइस द पोरस चाइल्ड कैन अफोर्ड इट एंड लर्निंग कैन बिकम फन फॉर अ चाइल्ड लाइक दैट दिस इज अ काइंड ऑफ फोक टॉय व्हिच वुड यू फाइंड इन आंध्र और कर्नाटक ओके इट्स लाइक एन It's like a joker. It's like an acrobat, which is flagellating, dancing with his hands and legs. This is made from a palm leaf. Tal ke patte ka banana. Kitna khusurat hai. Ek beech mein ek baas ki chali lagi hai. All these hinges are just with a needle and a thread. Dono taraf do gaathe hain aur do ra hai. So these hands and arms can move very easily. And But you could make the same toy very easily using a card card sheet. This is what we did. Now, <coughs> the head and the body are doubled. There is a crevice there. You put the shoulder there, the arms there, and these are four hinges. You can see this. See closely. And if I spin this, what? Well, it's a very nice dancer. If I spin it with both hands, this is like a flying man. Centrifugal force. If it's, it tends to fly things out. children learn many concepts very intuitively through toys in a play manner play someone said is very serious business our schools are so boring the government is trying to put in many many schools they try to put the best effort forward but schools are still boring life outside the school is so much fun for children children also learn a great deal without being taught they're very clever You know, you don't have to repeat again and again to children. They just grasp it like this. Now, this is—it's like a flying man. That's what centrifugal force intuitively is. You spin a thing, it tends to fly out. There are toys like this. You can see this is a—it's an exercising man. Look at that. How nice! Look at the back side. It's a—it's it, a coconut broomstick, and. A straw, and this is the toy. Cost no money. Would help the poorest child. You you can't buy it in a mall. You can't buy it online on Amazon. But if you're clever, you can make it with your own hands in no time. Right? There are some very amazing toys. Now, when I was a child, we would take newspapers and magazines, cut a small square, fold it. Now this is a big triangle. Fold it again, and we make a small triangle. This is the, like the letter V, V for van, V for victory. This also looks like the ears of an animal, of an animal. And then, with, with no scissors, with your two hands, you cut a round, a long and a rounded ears. Fold this to the front. Fold this to the back. And in 15 seconds, you have a rabbit, Mr. Rabbit. Rabbit's long ears, rabbit's mouth, rabbit's front legs. This is the body. You hold the butt. You hold the legs just below the body. Grab the tail, and if you move it forwards and backwards, what does the rabbit do? It flaps its ears. It's a thirty-second toy. I played this sixty years back as a child, and I think sixty years down, all these very fancy cacophonic, all these LEDs, the Earth can't afford these stupid toys. Children would still be playing with a toy like. This. They are much lighter on Mother Earth. They can be recycled. The kind of junk which the toy factory of the world are producing, right? They should be careful about this. Give our children a creative childhood. It need not be these flashy toys which everyone talks about, right? Look at this. Now, similarly, if you take another square in three minutes, you fold this back. Now this has been there. This is documented history. This is called as a flapping bird. The Japanese have made this for three hundred years. It's it's dovetailed into their religious rites. Like comes Diwali, we do some puja, we uh, crackers, we eat some sweets, and then the whole family sits. In Japan, they would have a festival. They would pray. They would eat rice cakes, and then the whole family will sit and fold paper. 
and that's how this art has kept alive for three three hundred years. A square, no glue, no scissors, and you, this has stood its ground for three hundred years. No glue, no scissors, just your ten little fingers, and two minutes to make this amazingly dynamic model. Now, what we did many years back was to take the same bird and and attach a fan in the tail. Can you see this fan? There, there is a reefer and a pin, all pin rotating, and this is just like a little helicopter, which you will make. So it's a fan tail bird, and if I just hold it like this, and I spin this, this bird goes on like this. It's aerodynamic, it's eco-friendly, it's made from recycled materials, it doesn't burn a hole in your bucket. Go collect an old reefer and you can make 10 of these. You can't buy this on Amazon. I can bet you on that. Right. So this is the goodness of great toys. This is a quarter of the A4 size paper. A quarter. And we just fold this. In A4 size, you can make four of these. This is called as a clapper. And put a small trough. There is a small trough over here. And this kind of provides a restoring. This, is the this depression provides a restoring cup. Very, very nice, dynamic toy. But like the butterfly, I like the rabbit which you just saw. This once again is a two minute toy. It's like a flapping butterfly. It just simulates the wings of a butterfly. Right. Many, many years back, uh, this was in my second book. You take a little strip of paper like this. You can see this. It's one centimeter by 12 centimeters. Make a small cut over here, another cut at the lower edge. And then you interlock both these notches. And what is the shape you get? It looks like a fish. And a fish is something which, which swims in water. But this is an amazing fish. It's a flying fish. If you just leave this in the air, it would just come tumbling down, hmm? enthralling you. If you if you uh, throw it from the terrace to the down floor, the children below can catch it. It's a very well. You can try different sizes: the long fishes, the broad fishes, small fishes, heavy fishes, light fishes, all kinds of variations, and you'll understand something about flight through these. This is a similar. I played with this as a child. It's called as a helicopter. It's one minute toy. You see these two wings? If I just leave this, it will come twirling down. And then there is a challenge to children. Make a ring with your thumb and your index finger. And in this, this falling helicopter, you've got to catch in this ring. It's very challenging for children. You can also make some very nice. This is a it's like a flapping butterfly. See this? this is a fruity straw, a thin straw. This is a fat straw. And the, the thin straw goes inside the fat straw. And on the top, you have a flapping butterfly. Uh, my colleague Vidula uh, made, a, made a crane with the same kind of very, very elegant crane. Cost no money. They should part and parcel of every school, do activities. One must thank this government for starting the Atal Tinkering Labs. The physics lab, chemistry lab, maths lab, biology lab, they are all linked to the curriculum, a very boring curriculum. But the Atal Tinkering Labs, you know, our Prime Minister gave the slogan of Make in India when he came. But very soon there was a realization that there would never be a Make in India until children in school started dirtying their hands. Until, unless children in school started making small models, there would never be a shining India. There would never be a make in India. And that's why they introduced the Atal Tinkering Labs, where children, I think there are 5,000 Atal Tinkering Labs in government and private schools, which the government is very liberally funding. And this would unleash the creativity of lakhs of our children. Children who crack the IITs go to some quota coaching or some other stupid coaching and but they're very bad with their hands right they may be able to crack these tough exams 
but they can't make anything. They can't build anything. We don't have a culture of building. So these utter tinkering labs will help a culture of making and doing. Children need a lot of experience with different materials, with paper, with wood, with, with, with steel, with plastic, with rubber, putting them together, pulling them out, dismantling, assembling. That's what engineering is all about, to get to the nitty gritties, understand the nuts and bolts of things. Very, very nice, such an elegant toy. Now, this is something which is designed by a mathematician. Imagine, you can see four pictures. What are these? Butterflies, frogs, snakes, eagles. Butterflies, frogs, snakes, eagles. This is called as a flexicon, designed in 1928 by Arthur Stone at Harvard University. And four pictures which come in a sequence one after the other, and you can weave a story in them. Butterflies are insects, insects are eaten by the frogs, frogs eaten by the snakes, snakes eaten by the eagles. It's like a little food chain, right? It goes on. And science is full of cycles and chains and sequences. It's a very powerful model. The cycle of the seasons, the life cycle of a, of a frog, the life cycle of a butterfly, all of them you can depict in this. And if you have an A4 size paper like this, white on one side, printed on the other. The printed side would be camouflaged. A scale and a pencil. No glue, no scissors. In three minutes, you can make this flexible. We have, a, we have a three minute film of the flexicon on our website. It was, it is of course dubbed into 20 languages, including Polish. The Polish Academy of Sciences dubbed that film into Polish. Within a month, there were five lakh viewers in Poland of that particular film. Very amazing. Even the remotest village school, a piece of paper, a scale, a pencil, no great shakes. You do, you can do this. A world-class model. Similarly, see this. This is another one. This is made from, it's called as a 14-page unending book. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's the last page in the book starts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14-page unending book, which is quite two squares. This requires a bit of glue. Three minutes again, and every child has a favorite story, which they can hear a hundred times without getting bored. So every child chooses her own favorite story and makes 14 pictures out of it, sequential pictures, and they put them on. And then you will get a 14, every child would have a rotating, dynamic, moving picture book on their pet story, on their most favorite story. A totally task. It won't require much money to do this. You require passion to do this. Not many things are done by money. They require passion. One more toy that I like to show you now. This is something called as a. It's like a levitating pencil. There are these. Uh, you have a piece of rubber. It's an old rubber slipper, and there are four magnets over here. You can see, and then I have a pen. The pen has got two magnets, total of six ring magnets. They're arranged in a particular pattern. The front magnets attract. So they're opposite poles. This has to be north and they'll be south. So they attract. Now the back, these, these magnets and this magnet, the back magnets are all similar polarities. They repel each other. So they push the pencil away. The front ones attract. And now you can see. This pencil is just hanging in the air. I can twirl it, right? Now there's a lot of friction between the pen point and my finger, so I take a bit of CD. This is an old CD or DVD. You can cut it with the scissors. It's as smooth as glass. And if I put this, this is it. It spins, it levitates, it writes. Many countries have maglev trains, which zip at 600 kilometers an hour, right? This costs very little money, 10 rupees to make it. Our children will get a glimpse as to what high technology is in a toy format. Now, some of the great toys are something which quiz children. 
they inspire them to discover. Now, this is something which was done at the Vikram Sarabhai Community Science Center 50 years back. Every child was given a matchbox, same brand. So that's the same size. It's an empty matchbox. This is a drawer, this is a shell. Then they were given a challenge. You have a week's time and you, you have to fill one specimen, different specimens, not two of the same, different things in this matchbox for a week. And a child who's able to fill in the maximum number of things, most things would be the winner. Now, the children were gripped by this challenge. They went home and they started looking for little things. How can we pack in more and more things into a matchbox? They could be very tiny. Then they went to the mother's kitchen. They found a mustard seed. That They found a jeera cumin that went. They want a fennel soft bogey. One hair went, one strand of thread went. In a week, a child was able to pack in 250 things inside a matchbox. Right? For the first time, they were looking into the world of the micro and the small and the tiny. Right? And they became aware of so many things, little things which had never seen before. 250 things in a matchbox. Cost no money at all. A great challenge uh, to achieve. So we make many, 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 many toys using these matchboxes. Yeah. This, one. this is uh, uh, made from a matchbox. You can see that the, this is the drawer and this is the empty matchbox. We have put in two paper clips, stuck them with tape. A bit of the paper clip is popping out, just about two millimeters. So there is a small gap, it's like a hole. And we weave a thread in that hole. You can see this, right? That's it. Now, all the weight is on one side. If I make the thread tight and I just leave this, you can see this toy. It comes shimmering down like this. This is friction and gravity at work at its greatest glory. You can invert this. And once again, very, very doable toy. A very doable toy. On the one using a matchbox, and you can see the thread. There is one thread which has been woven into it. This is like the matchbox string. You take a long needle, poke it here, and pull it out from here. At a slant, it goes at a slant. Again, poke it here and pull it out from here. And then tie a thread. I will open the matchbox and show you that both these threads are going at a slant. That's it. And how does, how does the strain work? Uh, see this. I'm just going to hold this like this. And if I start this right hand of mine, if I just shake it, the train goes on the tracks. It's moving. It's unidirectional. It doesn't come back. I've got to take it back like that. This is all because of friction. Don't just talk about friction in a very theoretical manner to children. Show them a dozen experiments with friction. Let them test it out. Let them try it out. This is the way of getting children hooked to science. Very good. Now, if you stick a, a picture of a rabbit on this, it will look like a rabbit going hop, hop, hop. Now, you can put a picture of a steam engine. It is going chuck, chuck, chuck. You can do many, many nice things with this. One of the other, other toys, uh, which Sudarshan has mentioned, uh, has to do with a capsule. Now, this is an old medicine capsule, right? And what, what we're going to do is take this capsule and take a small ball bearing. You can see the steel ball, which we use in the bicycle pedal. You put this inside the capsule and you put the other thing around. Now, this, but this, no. The ball can slide inside the capsule like this, left and right, and then you make a small, this is like a channel. Uh, you can make it with paper, but if I make it with paper, you'll not be able to see it. So this is the transparency. And if I keep it over here, if I tilt it a little bit, you can see, this is how it goes. It's, it's, it's called as a tumbling capsule. This is from Sudarshan Khanna's book, the joy of making Indian toys. 
This book I translated into Hindi for the National Book Trust. Sundar Salone Bharti Ekhilone. You can go to my website and download this. But a very, very beautiful one. It almost looks alive. Every house has some disused capsules lying. Just throw away the medicine, uh, put in a bicycle ball bearing, and you have a great, great toy. Under the toy uh, is something called as a lift. Again, comes from Sudarshan's book. Now, this is this is a thread reel. This is where the, it's made from cardboard. It's a thread reel. And I just take about two, two feet of thread. And I've just, I've just attached two, two paper handles to it. That's it, on both ends. And I double the thread and I weave it through the, through the screen, it comes out. That's it. Now this is the doubled up thread. I'm going to hang it with my finger over here. And there you are, look at this. I, I pull one of those and the lift goes up because this paper is pulling it up. Now I take the second second handle and pull it down. But mind you, the first paper handle is coming from below and is going to hijack the lift. Very intriguing toy. Why does the lift go up and down like that? Right? Very intriguing for little children. Because very little money. I think Sudarshan's book only demonstrated that we could make learning much more interesting, creative for our children without all these very expensive gizmos, which create so much of junk, so much of pollution, electronic pollution, right? Many of our, many of our traditional toys were crafted out of throwaway material. There is a story from the life of the Buddha. Uh, once the great Buddha was going for an inspection. Now that may sound strange, but he was going to a vihara and there was a young monk over there. And Buddha asked, do you have any grievances? Do you want something? And the young monk said, sir, could I have a new Angarkha? Angarkha is a woolen shawl. Buddha was the wisest man who ever trod Mother Earth. And he asked him a counter question. You must be having an Angarkha earlier what happened to your old Angarka? So the young monk said, Sir, I wore it for so many years, it had become torn, so I now use it like a bed sheet, bed cover. Not to be satisfied, Buddha asked, What happened to your old bed cover? Master, that was torn, so I cut it up and I made a pillow cover with that. Buddha always dealt deep into phenomena, no superficial insights. He asked, you must be having a cover on your pillow earlier. What happened to that old pillow cover? The young monk said, Master, I had dropped my head a million times on the pillow cover and there was a big hole in there. It was tattered. So I now use it like a foot mat. Last time the Buddha asked, tell me, what did you do with the old foot mat? Master, my feet had rubbed on the foot mat and all the fibers had come out. So I collected all the fibers and made a wick for a lamp and I burnt it in the lamp. And then the wise Buddha smiled. He deserves a new Angarka. So a thing has many, many lives. Now this is 2,500 years back. Buddha gave a message of recycling which modern day scientists, modern day engineers need to pay heed to. We must try to do more with less, recycle, reuse. Uh, I will show you one very nice example of, uh, of this. Now, often we say that uh, children know, know very little, they're new to the world, and the task of the teacher is to just give them a lot of information. A, a teacher is, a, uh, is full of knowledge. Uh, he or she has so many degrees, right? But children are capable. So it's a one-way traffic. We just pour different, all kinds of information, bombard them with all kinds of sometimes stupid information. 
Children are not interested in that. Children are capable of not just consuming knowledge, but creating their own new knowledge. So we worked with a municipal school when I was in Ayuka, uh, inside the Pune University campus. Uh, there is only one school, it's called the Vidya Pichala, and it's run by the Karve Shikshan Sastha. We worked there for eight years because that was the only school on the campus, four hundred acre campus. We said, the whole world uses our stuff, but Chirak, Tale, Andhira, one school in our campus, and they should have access to us. And the poorest children come to that school. So we spent eight years in that school, and this is what was designed by seventh grade children coming from the most humble backgrounds. Uh, they made this toy. I'm going to show you this toy. Now, this is a hoop from a plastic bottle. The millions of plastic bottles which we just chuck, chuck away. We just made two holes, two opposite holes like this, and I'm putting a, a cycle spoke. So then I weave it through one hole, put a magnet there, and weave it like this. That's the toy. If I give it a small twirl, Just come spinning like a like a hoop. And I can invert this again. There is no reference in literature to a toy like this. Poor children, seventh grade children, are capable of original research. We need to have trust in them. And we need to give them that latitude to do research. They took a, a, a paper cup. Uh, we drink tea, coffee in this, and we throw it away. We just made they made a hole in the base, uh, in the in the center of this. Took two ring magnets, one they put in the front, and one from inside. So the ring magnets stuck to each other. Magnets stick to each other. No glue, no adhesive. And they took a bicycle spoke once again and put it in this. designed by seventh class children of a municipal school right i would not be surprised if someday we may import this toy from a neighboring country right this is it one of the most fascinating toys experiment with toys, uh, which I like, is this. Now, this you can recognize. Uh, this is a fertilizer bag, uh, a wheat bag or a rice bag made from woven, it's like a woven plastic sack. So, we just took about 10, 12 strands, about a foot long, and we tied a knot over here. Right? That's the knot. We just keep them hanging. And if I just, just rub them with my thumb and my finger, you can see that. They become charged. And you can see this, this strand is attracted to my hand. And because they're similarly charged, they are repelling each other. Right? What a nice experiment. All our scientists, they live in ivory towers. They must come down to the people, understand the problems of the people. I've been to 3,000 schools, and every school I go to, I would say, i like to see your science lab. You see, many schools would not have a science lab, but the elite ones might have. But if you, even if you go there, you will see these burets and pipettes, fancy glassware, plasticware. And if you have a perceptive eye, you will see a grime on dust, grime of dust laden. Because all this equipment is meant for the inspectors, not the children. But this is what our children need. If a village child brings one pota, one plastic bag from the home into the school, the whole school can take the experiment back to the community. They will understand a great deal about static electricity. If you want to discharge it, you put it to your body, it's discharged. Again, charge it, pull it again, and then you can charge. You can see this. What a nice experiment, right? Why is not there in the NCRT textbooks? It should be. This is an experiment which should be there in the NCRT textbook. Right? 
uh, we saw the, the we saw the shimmering matchbox and this is a mela toy a village toy in Pune during the Shara at the Chatshingi temple we used to have a mela unfortunately this year because of the pandemic uh, there was no mela but you would get a toy like that a little a little monkey coming down you can just see this It's a little woodpecker and the woodpecker if you there is a little spring here there's a spring over here and there's a cardboard woodpecker if you just leave it it comes tumbling down very very fascinating toy for children one of the toys which we did many many years back uh, i'd spent 14 years in delhi that's the time there were no cng buses there were only diesel buses and there was a great campaign to throw out the diesel buses because they were they were harming the particulate matter were just getting lodged into the people's lungs. We were killing our own people with these diesel buses. And so we, we made 20% of the children in Delhi suffer from asthma. And we thought of this toy, which is just a straw, take about half a straw, this is four inches long, and with a pencil. Now, if you look at the pencil point, it's a conical point. And with the pencil, you make a hole over here. So it'd be a very nice rounded hole. You can't make it with the scissors because it'd be sharp edges there. And then you take ordinary sewing thread, cotton thread, and there is a knot over here. You can see there is a knot here. I'll show you the knot. This is the knot. This is the knot. Right? So there is a hoop hanging here. And you give it to the child. The only thing the child can do is to blow at it. Right? When children play with a toy like this, it's got 10 paisa. It strengthens their lungs. They breathe deeply. And that's what is required in an asthmatic child. So something that costs a little money. So this has a social consequence. It's dovetailed to our social needs, a toy. They need not be just all for play. This is again Tik Tiki uh, from Sudarshan's book, The Joy of Making Indian Toys. Now this is a crown cap. It's a cope or a coke or a Fanta cap, right? A uh, crown cap. And this is a button and this is a rubber band. You can see that's a rubber band tied over here. I can pull this and see this. And there is a thread over here. And this thread has at every two inches, it's got a knot. There are knots over here. You, you can see the knots more clearly now. You can see the knots more clearly. Now I'm just going to just run my thumb and my index finger and you can hear a sound. It's called as a tick to tick. It makes a very gentle sound. The, the, uh, the button strikes the crown cap, and this is called as a tick tick. It's a sound toy. Another sound toy I will show you is uh, this is, of course, a, uh, any plastic bottle. This is an old pen which is press fitted into it. You can see the top of the pen is right over here in the middle. Then you take a torn balloon and you stretch it out and put a rubber band. So this might stretch membrane. You can see the, the, the pen is right over here touching the balloon. Hence a refill okay, inside this. If I blow, if I blow, well, the whole membrane vibrates. And this acts like a sound box, and you're able to do some loud noise. Another one of those toys is this. You see this. <clears throat> this is from our old bottle. And what we've done is this is the lid of the bottle. And a put a there's a bicycle spoke put in here. This is the head of the spoke so that it doesn't go. And this is the lid. Put some rubber and we, we take out. There's a thread over here. Now look at this. It's like a flywheel. The thread gets looped again on the on the reverse cycle, so this fan goes clockwise and anti-clockwise. Very nice toy. 
a old toy which you would find even in Mela still now, an uh, Indian toy, very fascinating, is this parrot, a pecking parrot. You can see there is a weight hanging, it's a little wooden ball, and there are two threads, one is tied to the neck, the other is tied to the tail. And if I, if I just rotate it like this, you can see this. It's very difficult to buy a toy like that because the market is flooded with cheap factory made toys. This is handcrafted by some artist. Very, very nice toy. There are variations of this toy across the world. Another one which I played as a child, I can't find that now. This was made out of thin sticks. And you would get a snake out of this. I could not find this, so I just made them with straws. You can see these straws. And I put a pin over here, a paper pin, and bend it on the other side so it doesn't hurt anyone. This is the bent side. I'll just, with a nose plier, bend the pin. And this becomes like a, it's like a striking snake. Look at this. Look at this. There are many, many principles involved in this, but a very nice tool. The straws work very beautifully for this. Mm -hmm.